In this short video, we're going to be going over the cranial nerves and uh, the main functions of each of them. So recall in the last video, we went over uh, which ones were sensory, which ones were motor. And remember, if they're sensory, they're only going to be afferent. They're taking sensory information to the brain, whereas if they are only motor, then they're going to be also referred to as efferent and they're taking information away from their brain. And remember, many of them are mixed, which means they're taking information in both directions. So our first slide here is on the cranial nerve number one. And recall there's a mnemonic for some of these. And cranial nerve number one is going to be, first of all, purely sensory, as you probably could imagine. So that means it's afferent. The sensory signal begins at the top of the nasal cavity here and it sends a sensory signal to the brain. The uh, main disorder associated with this is a um, partial or loss of smell called anosmia. The next cranial nerve is cranial nerve number two which is the optic nerve and as you can probably imagine as well it is also sensory because it's taking information beginning at the eyeball so beginning actually at the uh, back of the retina, and we're going to learn in the special senses chapter how that action potential is actually formed along the optic nerve. The signal crosses to the um, opposite hemisphere at the optic chiasm and then travels back via the optic track to the thalamus, and then it travels via the optic radiation to the visual cortex. And the primary homeostatic imbalance associated with the optic nerve is called anopsia. Cranial nerve number three is called the oculomotor nerve. And ocular means eye, obviously, and motor means muscle. So in this case, this is going to be primarily a motor nerve and what's important to know about it is that it is going to control four of the six extrinsic eye muscles and we'll be learning more about that in the special senses chapter but it also has some parasympathetic nerves so remember rest and digest and in this case it's actually going to control the iris so it will cause the pupils to constrict and the pupils are going to constrict when we're relaxing. So that should make a lot of sense to you hopefully. The opposite of this, which is when the pupils would dilate, that would be from the sympathetic nervous system, which we will be discussing in another chapter. And the primary, primary homeostasis imbalance associated with this nerve is called external strabis strabismus, almost like a lazy eye, and it appears at rest that one eye is going to rotate in a lateral direction. And the reason that this happens is because um, the nerve signal is not going to these important muscles. Cranial nerve number um, four is called the trochlear nerve. And it is also associated, it also, first of all, is a motor nerve, as we see here in the uh, function. And it's going to control one of the extrinsic eye muscles specifically the superior oblique muscle. And the superior oblique muscle is on top of the eye. And when that muscle is not working correctly, um, the person's eye is going to rotate down and outward. And that homeostatic imbalance is referred to as double vision. For those of you that are 80s fans, which is... Um, not many of you probably, but there was a famous 80s song that was called Double Vision. So the next one is the trigeminal nerve, which is cranial nerve number five. It's a very massive nerve, and it is one that um, has three different parts to it. It has one region called the ophthalmic division associated with the eye. It has a region called the maxillary division and the mandibular division. And you can see that it's a pretty gigantic nerve. It's going to cover a large area of the face. And it's going to be associated specifically with um, 
a very excruciating pain called tic de la rue, also called trigeminal neuralgia. But this is the nerve that um, they um, anesthetize when they do a root canal. And if you look more closely at this diagram, you can see that some of the roots of the nerve are going to lead to the alveolar process area, which is where the teeth would be located. The next cranial nerve is called the abducens nerve. And the abducens nerve is the last nerve that's going to control extrinsic eye muscles. And specifically, it's the lateral rectus muscle. And so when somebody doesn't have their lateral, or lateral rectus muscle working, that means that they can't turn their eye laterally or, work, or look into the periphery. So their eye is going to migrate towards their nose. And that is called internal strabismus. And so it's a primarily motor nerve. And so I want you to remember specifically that there are going to be three cranial nerves that are associated with the extrinsic eye muscles. There is cranial nerve three, which is the oculomotor, and that controls four, of, four out of the six extrinsic muscles. Also, there is cranial nerve number four, which is the trochlear nerve, and it's going to control one of the cranial nerve, or one of the extrinsic eye muscles. And finally, there is the abducens nerve. And the abducens nerve is the one shown here. But what's important about this, it's very significant, is that there are three out of the 12 cranial nerves that are associated just with the extrinsic eye muscle. So this gives you an idea of how very important they are. And these are the muscles just outside of the eye that allow us to, to rotate the eye, to move it left and right, up and down. The next cranial nerve is the facial nerve. And the, the facial nerve is a very large nerve as well. And it actually has five branches to the facial nerve. And all of them are listed on this slide. We have the temporal, the zygomatic, we have the buccal, which is the cheek, we have the mandibular, and the cervical. And this nerve, when it's damaged, is associated with Bell's palsy. Bell's palsy almost looks like there has been a paralysis or of the facial muscles. The next cranial nerve is cranial nerve 8, the vestibulocochlear nerve. And the vestibulocochlear nerve, uh, the word vestibule, notice, is a part of the inner ear, and the cochlea is the hearing portion of the ear. So um, if we look at the two roots of that word, the word vestibule has to do with balance or equilibrium. And then cochlea is where the hearing receptor is going to be located. So that's how we get this word. When this um, nerve is not working correctly, the person may have conduction deafness or some sort of uh, damage to their vestibular apparatus, which could cause problems with balance, like dizziness, for example. Cranial nerve number nine is a mixed nerve. And so remember, that means it has both sensory as well as motor. And it's specifically going, its sensory portion is going to be associated with the posterior third of the tongue. And it is also going to control the um, the gag and the swallowing reflex, so that's the motor portion of it. The next cranial nerve is one of the most significant cranial nerves, and it is the most significant of all the parasympathetic fibers. In fact, if we think of all the parasympathetic nerve fibers, the large majority of them are all going to be parasympathetic. The, this, um, the word vagus nerve sort of looks like the word vagabond, which means the great wanderer. And in this case, that kind of describes where the vagus nerve goes. It wanders all throughout the thoracic cavity to important organs like the heart, the lungs. It also wanders down into the abdominal pelvic cavity to control some very vital organs. So if the vagus nerve is damaged, there are many, many possibilities. Um, and eventually, if it's, if it's severed, it could lead to the loss of life. 
The next cranial nerve is the accessory nerve, and it is one of those examples of a mixed nerve. So as far as its muscle role, it's going to control two important muscles, the sternocleidomastoid and also the trapezius muscle. It also has a sensory uh, portion, which begins with proprioceptors in some of the same muscles. And the homeostatic imbalance um, would be problems with these two muscles that are shown here. Finally, cranial nerve number 12 is the hypoglossal nerve. And the hypoglossal nerve, the word itself means under the tongue. And this nerve runs from the tongue and inner, or runs below the tongue and in, innervates the tongue muscles. But damage to it is going to cause problems with swallowing. And we will stop with the cranial nerves and the next uh, video will be on the spinal nerves.